analysis. I'm not spending any time whatsoever thinking of black letter law as I'm just sort of reflexively writing down all this stuff. I'm thinking about analysis, so when analysis comes, boom, I'm knocking that out. And then I just move on to the next, next issue. And I remember taking the bar and just being like, just autopilot, going through all my little worlds that I created. Where is this going to betray you? Where is this method going to betray you? Let me tell you. One is that you got to really live it. You got to really do this. You got to commit. You can't just do this kind of on the side and be like, well, you know, I'm going to do a couple of these things. It's got to be something that you do every day. You need to go back and you have to do the little analysis to make sure it's still there every single day. You got to be organized. That's why cleaning your room is so important. You want to have the all of these little images in a folder or a binder that you cannot lose. You also have to have good outlines. So whatever outline you're using, it better be good because the information that you memorize has got to be good. And you want to make sure that you know, you've, you've got it. You're all smart. You can all do the analysis. But why not just let these images allow you to systematically go through and talk about what it is and what it isn't. And a lot of people get hung up on the bar because they don't talk about what it isn't. So the Carney example is perfect. In the instant factual pattern, this informant was not paid by the government. So Carney does not apply. That's what people forget. They forget to talk about what it isn't. And they're not proving to the grader that they really know the law inside and out. Other people are talking about what it isn't, and they're getting better grades than you. Because it's just a bell curve. You know, you're in competition with everybody that you're, you're taking the bar with. So the person who talks about what it isn't is going to get a higher grade than the person who talks about what it is only. And you need to prove to this grader that you just, you've got it upside down, inside out. Um, I suggest that you start with the easiest. You know, contracts is going to be a little bit trickier than criminal procedure. Because in criminal procedure, you have things happening, frisking going on. It's very easy to, to you know, performance is a little bit trickier. You know, these uh, UCC issues are a little bit trickier than, uh, than the idea of someone actually being frisked or someone being searched or um, that kind of thing. Civil procedure is very, very easy because you can, you can put together like a bode service. Um, how do you serve somebody? Well, okay, you've got mail, the person, abode. Th those are nouns. Nouns are the easiest things to, to put together. So as you go through the, um, you know, as you're going through your outlines, identify what outlines are the easiest for you to get through first. And don't try and put the square peg in the round hole. Start with what's easiest. Don't go through the, the ones that you are least familiar with, or the ones you know the least about. You know, for example, I know the most about criminal procedure, so that was very easy for me to come up with a, with a way to memorize it. It would be harder for me to talk about property law because that's not the kind of attorney I am, so I, maybe that would come later. Um, and then finally, what you want to do is that once you have all of these outlines together in your brain, I want you to go for a walk. And when you go for the walk, I want you to go through the little worlds that you've created. I want you to get out of that little hell hole that you've, you know, where you study, and I want you to air yourself out. I want you to go around. I want you to start thinking about, okay, well, uh, I'm thinking of cats and gates. I'm thinking about Maryland and Barra. And go through it in your brain. And that's where it actually gets fun to study. That's when it becomes much more entertaining to, to essentially, as you're walking around, I would walk around ASU sort of in a little daze, and you can people watch, and you can do whatever you want, but at the same, same time, you're studying. And maybe you've got a little piece of paper that's going to help you that's got all the cases on it, so you can refer to that just to verify that you've got it. But when you go for those little walks, that's when you're going to be telling yourself, okay, this one's, this world I've created, this one's weak. This one's strong. I got this one. And then when you go back, you study the world, the, the world that you're a little bit weak. As far as multiple choice goes, my advice to you is practice tests. Studying for a multiple choice 
test is just so tricky because why wouldn't you just at least practice that mental exercise of reading a question and looking for the right answer? You're much, much better practicing than you are just doing the, you know, I talk to people who have failed and I say, well, cool. what were you doing? What? I was like, well, I was reading a lot. And I say, okay, that's, that's not going to work. Reading is not helpful to you in, in that you have to create a lattice work. You have to create a context. Just generally reading, you're trying to absorb so much information and memorize so much information. Reading doesn't do anything for you. We're, we're way past reading at this point. You're either memorizing or you're practicing. And so if you find yourself, you know, burning a day and you haven't practiced anything and you haven't memorized anything, you've just wasted a day. You've wasted a day of your life. You have to spend at least 75% of your time practicing taking tests and memorizing. Same thing goes for essays. You need to write essays. If you're not writing essays and if you're not showing them to other people, then you're wasting your time because that is, that's practicing. So when it's time for you to take the bar, your hand is already ready to go. You're, it's just hardwired. You have the muscle memory that you can just burn through it because you practice it so many times. And that makes it sort of reflexive and that makes it so it's easy and, and fun. That you just can get into autopilot and you're just boom, knocking this thing out. So if you are not practicing every day, you're failing yourself. If you're not memorizing every day, you're failing yourself. If you start your study session with, oh my god, I'm going to fail the board, and then, you're failing yourself. The last thing I want to talk about is visualization. Talking about how you get into a mode where it's easier for you to, to memorize stuff. It is scientifically proven, it is documented, that it is possible to hypnotize yourself. You can do it. Not that I'm asking you to, but you need to be aware of the fact that you control your brain and you're not at the mercy of your own brain. That you can control how stressed out you are. So before you study, I deeply suggest that you relax and you visualize yourself relaxing to the point where you are completely, completely comfortable. Once you are completely comfortable, and the way you get there is you know you count to 20 and as you're, or you move from your toes up to your head and you visualize yourself relaxing. Once you get to a point where you're completely relaxed, what, what can you do? You can say, I visualize myself studying for two hours where I'm going to have fun, where I'm going to create associations, visual associations that are going to be permanently etched into my brain. I will not forget them. I will not forget them because they'll be funny. They'll be outrageous. They'll be ludicrous. They'll be like the person impaling themselves on the knight's saber or lance. And, and I will just have it and I won't forget it and it will be funny and it will be enjoyable. This will be a fun process for me. And when I'm done, I will have a sense of satisfaction and an accomplishment that I've done something that a lot of people can't do. I've memorized a huge amount of information in a very, very short amount of time. I've done the impossible. And that I will sleep well and when I wake up the next day, that information will be there. And when I take the bar, that information will effortlessly come back. And why will it come back to you without any hesitation? Why? Yeah, why? Because it will have been a fun process. Okay, what's the certainty though? What's the thing that you can rely on? You absolutely can rely on. I brought it up before. There's something that happens when you do this and you really work it correctly. That image comes into your brain, how? You think, I think of cats. It's already there. Your brain gives it to you. You gave it to yourself. It is the first thing that popped into your brain. I'm not creating an outline for you. I'm not forcing this. You gave it to yourself. You gave it to yourself. I gave Troilus and Cressida to myself. I gave All's Well that Ends Well to myself. Othello, Measure for Measure, King Lear, Anthony Cleopatra, okay? Coriolanus, Timon of Athens, Pericles, Cymbeline, Winter's Tale. I gave it to myself. Nobody told me to come up with that visual. Your brain gave you this gift. So when you are studying for the bar, you're not doing this, trying to you know, physically drag it out of somewhere. This image came to you automatically. You've got to get into that 
mental frame when you are studying for the bar and when you take the bar that it comes effortlessly. It comes naturally. It naturally came out of your brain and naturally popped into your head to create that first association. The amount of energy that you will expend to get it when you're studying for the bar and going over it, it should be natural. When you sit down and you're actually taking the bar, it is natural as if it's just sweating out of you. It's just automatic because your brain already gave it to you. And that's the confidence that you can have going in and take the bar. That you're not doing this like computer where your light's blinking and, you're, er, 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 and your hard drive is moving and you're like, okay, what is this? Okay, all right, all right, shit, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. No. Before you take the bar, don't surround yourself with people that are stressing out because they're going to make it more difficult for that information to come out of your brain naturally. You find a quiet place. What should you be doing? Drawing little pictures to yourself and laughing about what a pervert you are, what a weirdo you are, that you've got people impaling themselves on lances and getting cooked, and you're just like, oh, geez, I, I've got some serious problems. Right? <laughs> the more outrageous you make it, the more likely you are to, to memorize it. If whatever pops into your brain is embarrassing, whatever, your brain gave it to you. And you gotta just trust yourself. You gotta be like, okay, that's what my brain gave me and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm just gonna hang in there with what this is. And don't second guess yourself. Make sure that when you sit down and you take this test, that you get out of that mode of like <laughs> and say, that first question is there. I'm gonna identify what world I need to go to and I'm just gonna walk to that world. And before I start writing, I'm just going to walk around that world for a little bit. So if it was a warrants issue, and I see, okay, there's a warrant in my mind, maybe I'd even draw a little bit on the, on the exam, just for a second. I'm going to do this. This is take you know, 10 seconds to do. This is why having really intricate drawings is not necessarily the right thing to do. Real, real quick, a little hieroglyphics, basically. Go inhabit that world. Let everybody else stress out. Let everybody else freak out. You've got the secret. And then you just walk through the world as you're taking the tests, and you're writing down Gates, and you're writing down Spinelli, and you're writing down Carney, and you're, and you're just thinking of issues. And when it's time for you to, to do the analysis, and you crank out the analysis, conclusion, you move on. Your essays should look beautiful, because you've got all these citations that no one else is going to have. Everybody else is memorizing black letter law, but they're not giving you the Gates, and the Spinelli, and the Stanford, and that kind of stuff. Don't spend a lot of time memorizing, you know, um, if you can, people, if you say Gates, Gates is fine. Um, you don't have to bring up Illinois. If you're, if you're citing Gates, you don't have to put Illinois v. Gates. Okay, so you don't have to create that double. You're trying to memorize two things now. Just determine what it is that when they abbreviate it in your outline, that's what you're going to memorize. Don't, don't do the two. You know, because everybody knows what Terry is, right? Do you have to say Terry v. Ohio? And also, if you're saying the one word, it actually makes you look a little bit more learned. Like, you just throw that word around. Well, everybody knows that in Terry, a stop and frisk is acceptable. Under the so you want to get into that little mode. Okay? Any questions? <laughs>